Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surf tip is how to surf small waves faster. This is gonna be fun. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now this topic is super important, and I get a lot of questions from our community. How do I surf faster in smaller waves? And this topic is so big that I wanna put it in a series. When you guys ask me questions, I really think about all the different boards I've ridden, all the different constructions, the different fin setup options, and what I personally like. So the information that I give you in this first episode is gonna be about board design that I think about, board construction and all the options that we have and what I personally like best, and then the different fin setups and what I personally like best there. And I really hope this will help and then the next episode will be a little bit more about how I approach or attack surfing smaller waves. Now, the first thing I think we should identify is what are small waves. I wanna say head high and below, and if I'm gonna add a board like this into my quiver, my first thought is board design. Do I wanna go with a small wave performance board, or, or do I wanna go with a groveler? Now, these are two different board categories from my perspective. A small wave performance board has kind of like this outline like the mini ghost squash or the rocket wide squash where the outline's more like a high performance shortboard. And then a groveler for me has a wider outline more or less on the nose where the wide points a little bit forward and there's more surface area up in this area and if they seem like they're a little bit flatter. So grovelers for me carry more glide and they like to project and they're really fast down the line. Small wave performance boards, since it has that high performance outline, it'll go top to bottom quickly. It'll go down the line fast. And then I have to go back to board design and then I start thinking about rocker. Grovelers have a low entry with a, a wider outline, giving the surface area to get up on top of the water and give us that speed down the line. Now a small wave performance board, after years of testing and knowing that I'm more of a back footed surfer, I know that I like a wider tail block. Just that extra width, I can sit back on the tail and do my type of surfing, which is coming off the bottom, getting into the lip, or even going down the line. The wider tail block is gonna give me that lift and more speed that I'm talking about. The other thing that's super important especially on a small wave performance board is the rocker. I want a low entry rocker and maybe a low to medium exit rocker. Because I like to surf top to bottom, I wanna be able to do a legitimate turn like a tight arcing turn in the pocket, even with all the speed I'm looking for. So there's certain things for me personally that are really important. Now, if I'm gonna pick a small wave performance board or a groveler, where would I go first if I was adding this board to my quiver? I know who I am. Remember, high performance shortboard, surfing thrusters pretty much my whole life. Surfing top to bottom, this small wave performance board is gonna suit me best. Now the other thing I wanna talk about is design. On a small wave performance board, I like them to be roughly 5'4 to 5'6 in length. My typical high performance shortboard is roughly 5'7. I will ride 5'9", that's about my height, and that 5'9 will carry me into eight foot surf. So, riding a high, uh, small wave performance board at 5'4", or 5'6", now I start thinking about how do I wanna surf these small waves? If it's just about speed and projection and really surfing fast down the line, I might consider going with a groveler. And what I'm trying to get you to think about is where your home break is. What kind of waves are you surfing? But where I surf on a regular basis and who I am as a surfer, I'd go here first. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is I mentioned the length of a high performance shortboard. Going top to bottom, I want this shorter board to fit in a tight transition. Remember, if the wave's this big and I wanna to go to the bottom and I wanna get up into the lip real quick and get right back down, and surf the wave like this, this board has to fit for me. Now, the groveler, with it being shorter, I have a tendency to like my grovelers because of all the surface area up in here. They have some liabilities. Yeah, they're fast, they project well, but they do catch up in the nose area here on a tight arcing turn. 
That means when I go to the bottom and I want to come up in here and do a big carve, because it has a low entry rocker and all this width up here, it can catch. So I have to surf it really far off the tail for me to get what I want. And I have a tendency to ride these boards shorter. So what do I like these typically to be? Roughly 5'3". Now, these will surf top to bottom on occasion. And I feel like there are different grovelers that I like, like the Astro Pop, the Gremlin, the Ultra Joe, that give me that ability. And then it comes into fin setup, which is what we'll talk about next. Now I want to talk about the different fin setups that I prefer for maximum speed in smaller waves. I keep gravitating towards these high performance twin fins like the Fish Beard, I like the Aquila Iapa Modern Fish, and the Rusty Twin Fin. They're so fast, they're so fun. There's something about a twin fin that has no stabilizer, so there's no drag. And when I get up, I feel like it's got that quick get up and go speed. And with the right twin fin template, if it has a wide base and it's pretty upright, I can get into the lip quick and have the traction and hold without sliding out. This is my first choice as of the last couple of years. I'm having a blast on twin fins. And then on boards like the Mini Ghost, Squash Tail, Rocket Wide, Dominator 2, if I'm riding those as a small wave performance board, I'm going with a quad setup. And I like a neutral template on the side with a pivot quad rear so I can get the best of pivot and carve on the side fins. And I really like a pivot quad rear in the back to give me a little bit more pivot into the lip, kind of like a thruster. But what I love about a quad is with no center fin, there's less drag and I feel like it's offering me more down the line speed. I feel like I have a bit more flow from turn to turn. So there's a bit of release when I want it and it just suits my style of surfing. Now let's say you're not a twin fin guy or a quad and you're more of a thruster guy. If I were to surf small waves and I wanted a thruster feel, I'm going with a Twin Plus trailer. The side fins of these twin fin types of uh, setups right here has a wider base. So I'm gonna get a lot more drive. It's still pretty upright, so I can pivot quick. And then I have this little stabilizer in the back to give me something to pivot off of and make the board stable in general. Now, if you haven't dabbled in this, I'll tell you that for me, it feels like a thruster with a lot more speed. Now, if the waves are small, will I get on a thruster? It really depends on the board type and the wave. If the wave is super fast and I need a lot of drive, I might go with a rate template just because more of a rate template will offer a little bit more resistance and I'll push harder through my bottom turns just to gain that speed but I know me, I'm gonna go for a quad. Now, some of you guys ride bigger boards, more foam. So a really upright template, pivot fin, will go great for top to bottom surfing on those bigger boards. And this is always a great option, but this isn't my first option as a thruster guy. I prefer twin plus trailer. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the construction of the fins. And I've ridden a lot of speed generating fins, fins that have a good amount of flex and you can get some pop and projection out of fins depending on the materials or the construction they're made out of. After thorough testing a lot of fins, my signature stuff is G10 fiberglass and I'm getting that consistency and predictability and I'm really relying on the construction of the surfboard to give me that pop and projection that I like to generate that speed I want. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the surfboard construction options that you have when buying your small wave performance board. And you guys always ask me, what do I prefer, PU Poly or EPS Epoxy? If it's head high and below, I prefer EPS Epoxy every time. Our topic is how to surf faster in smaller waves. What I like about the EPS Epoxy constructions is the foam EPS it's a little bit more topical, so it floats a little bit better, it's on top of the water, and it has that extra pop and projection through turns without me having to work so hard for it. Now, I understand that we have a lot of different EPS 
epoxy constructions to choose from. We have the Spine Tech, you have the Dark Arts, which is an all carbon layup, and then you have a Stringer DPS epoxy, and then we have other epoxies like Aquila's here, where it has a high density foam. They usually running some sort of different carbon um, layup over that EPS foam to get that pop and projection just right. And for me, most of these boards that I've mentioned serve very similar. Then you ask me which one's my favorite out of all of them. I think there's a lot of unique stuff out there. And the most unique that I've ridden to date that has a little bit of extra flair to it is the Dark Arts. I wrote it on the Inferno 72, and I remember it was more or less backside going to the bottom, hitting that bottom turn, and it was almost explosive coming off the bottom and off the top. And it did take a little bit getting used to, but that's the kind of response I'm looking for in a surfboard. Now, for you guys that don't really like EPS epoxy, I'll say this, I have ridden some great grovelers and small wave performance boards in a PU Poly. And it's about what do I prefer? If I order a PU Poly, I would say this is team light on the Rocket Wide Squash Tail. I want my boards to be light and responsive under my feet when I'm in small waves. I talk about the length of the board being able to fit top to bottom in a quick tight transition and getting down the line quick. There's something about the weight. I know it doesn't seem like much, but if I get a board that's four and a half pounds, and that could be PU Poly or EPS Epoxy, or if I get something that's closer to six pounds, the four and a half pound board in either construction, because it's lighter, when I get to my feet, it feels, I can feel that lightness under my feet, and I feel like I can put where the board where I want faster. I like my boards ultra responsive, so being a little bit shorter, by design, fitting in the pocket quicker, adding a little extra pop and projection with EPS epoxy, and then keeping the board light and responsive. So what I'm thinking in my mind, I can actually translate it on the way faster with less application with trying to push hard on a heavier board to get it to go where I want. The last thing I'll say is if you're surfing a lot of choppy waves and you have a hard time getting control over that board, then go with the PU Poly. They sit down in the water better. You can engage the rail and get what you want out of it. And you can still glass it light and get this board to penetrate the water surface and surf top to bottom or get down the line quick. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's surf tip, episode one on how to surf small waves faster. Look, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.